Welcome to the Forex Trading Asia Daily Currency Call. Um, yeah, so this is the currency call where you will get market economic updates, key support resistance levels, trade ideas, and more. This currency analysis is going to be very beneficial to both the long-term investors and short-term traders. Here, we will be going through what could move prices, possible trade ideas, and also highlighting potential targets and risk. So a disclaimer here, any information shared during this session is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of the speaker. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades. Okay, so yesterday we had the ECB monetary policy decision released. So today we have Kim Hong, currency analysis at uh, LCMS Traders, to summarize that for us. So Kim Hong. Okay, happy Friday everyone. Okay, the European Central Bank monetary policy decision yesterday wasn't as blockbuster as the one that took place during the BOC. But anyway, the central bank actually held interest rate unchanged. Okay, the Pandemic Emergency Purchase Fund um, Program, the PPP, will still continue at a total envelope of 1,850 billion euros until the end of March 2022. Okay, while the Assets Purchase Program will continue at a monthly pace of 20 billion euro. Now, the key takeaway for this meeting is, I quote, the governing council continues to expect monthly net assets purchases under the APP to run for as long as necessary to reinforce the accommodative impact of its policy rates and to end shortly before it starts raising the key ECB interest rates. So what this sentence means is that they are going to keep um, quantitative easing on and on until you know for as long as the economy recovers okay so another thing that they actually highlighted is that okay let me get to the statement um where is it okay so the second key takeaway for this meeting is that once again i quote the governing council expects purchases under the PEPP over the current quarter to continue to be conducted at a significantly higher pace than during the first months of the year. So what this means is that they're actually saying that they may be increasing QE under the um, pandemic emergency purchase program for the upcoming months. So if you look at a chart for Euro dollar, okay, as mentioned by Gene yesterday, you know, if if they hold um, monetary policy unchanged, which is which actually means consistency, okay, it actually good for um, euro, which led to the strengthening of euro in the initial part of um, the meeting. But eventually, it actually weakened against the dollar by quite a lot. So that actually reflects the effect of um, the potential increase in further quantitative easing for the next few months, okay. But I have to highlight this to you, okay? The next meeting for the ECB is on the 10th of June, which means it's 1.5 months from now. Now, what this does is that it will give the Eurozone economy time to recover, okay? From now until then, if the, if the, if the situation gets worse, okay, specifically the COVID-19 situation in Eurozone gets worse, then we may see a higher chance that the central bank will further increase quantitative easing, all right? On the other hand, if situation actually improves, then, you know, the forward guidance by the central bank may actually turn to be um, better than um, what we are seeing right now. So June's meeting, to sum it up, June's meeting would be um, something that we all should um, keep a lookout for. Okay, thank you, Kim Hong, for that. Um, a very comprehensive uh, summary on the ECB monetary policy statements. 
Okay, so uh, right now we also have Scott here, Scott Andrews from the Forex Briefcase Australia team to share with us a little bit about the dollar index. Scott. All right, thank you. And uh, like Jim Hong said, uh, happy Friday, everyone. And it certainly was a comprehensive review, which is extremely helpful for retail and other individuals that seek some guidance. So definitely worth listening to every morning, guys. So look, US dollar, it did have a small rally. If you just have a look on the one hour time frame, I'll bring the chart up now. And we'll just see what's going on. I mean, there was a little bit of chatter out of the US with Joe Biden. There was a meeting with a lot of the leaders in regards to uh, what they're going to do with uh, greenhouse emissions and things like that. That went on. There was announcements about uh, uh, capital gains tax as well that was unexpected. So that really spooked the markets a little bit. So really, it sort of cooled the US dollar down a little bit. And what we're seeing here really with the range is that it's very low 91 to 91.50 or so. And we have made a couple of attempts on the 22nd and yesterday as well to get to 91.50, but we've failed. I think the high last night or very early this morning was in 91.40 or so. So in regards to a trade idea and direction bias, I did mention yesterday short biased. For a real significant move higher, we're going to have to see a significant catalyst in the 10-year bond yield that's still very flat and nothing really has changed there. So in regards to how you would trade this, it looks like we're being presented with a range-bound market with, with the US index. So just take what the market gives you, adapt to the situation, which obviously would mean probably reducing risk as well, because we're just seeing things float around. And most likely, well, we did see a bounce in the equity markets later on after it absorbed, you know, the announcement by Joe Biden with the tax plan, which I think really honestly is not a bad thing because the, the, the debt has to be dealt with. So this gives the market a little bit of closure and it did bounce a little bit. So this was really expected, but I think unexpected was the amount in regards to the capital gains tax because the corporate tax was discussed in his election and markets rallied when Joe Biden was elected. So I think this isn't a bad thing, but with the trade idea, again, we want to wait. Recent bottom was on the 20th of April at 90.8 or so, 90.83. So we wait until it gets down there or even at 91 for potential buy trade or wait till the US session starts. And again, we, we look for a sell at the top there. So those are my thoughts on uh, the index and a potential trade idea as well. Okay, thank you, Scott. Um, yeah, so generally it's due a um, downward uh, bias towards the dollar index, Scott? Yeah, it is, that, that's right. And right now is a bit of a frustrating time, obviously for giving clear trade ideas, but just, Again, be patient and a lot of the really good traders make their money from, you know, being patient. So yeah, it, right now it's just needing a bit of a push and it hasn't quite happened yet. So I would just say stand by on any magnificent trades that are around the corner, I'm sure soon. Okay, thank you so much, Scott, for the uh, analysis on dollar index. Right now, uh, let's jump to the currency in focus today, Canadian dollar and cryptocurrencies. So today we are with Jin Dao Tai, founder of LCMS Traders, uh, and also an international speaker where he speaks in countries like Hong Kong, UK, US, Australia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, and of course here in Singapore, sharing his views about the FX market. Yeah, so Jin, let's get into the currency in focus, the Canadian dollar. All right, thanks for that. So good morning again, everyone. Um, currency in focus, US CAD, Canadian dollar, Bank of Canada with that almost groundbreaking of changing news on Wednesday night where they came out um, with an adjustment to their QE policy, reducing stimulus on a weekly basis from 4 billion to 3 billion. Just sharing with you here now the news that came out. This was Wednesday night, so a couple of days ago. Um, 
Canadian CPI at that point missed forecast was expected to be 0.6, came out at 0.5. We, Gim Hong spoke about this yesterday already, uh, but the folk, you know, looking at the background behind the move that we are seeing right now, we do need to pay attention to what has happened. CPI numbers staying at 0.5%, probably driving prices a little bit higher towards the 1.2635 resistance. Leading up to the monetary policy report, the rate decision, which stayed at 0.25, but and also the rate statement. What was being released, sharing with you here, is that the Bank of Canada was going to hold the rates until if inflation objective is sustainably achieved, and they were adjusting the QE program to I highlight here a target of three billion on a weekly basis. So looking at this, what resulted was a big move on the US CAD with that CPI number missing expectations. We saw it move up towards 1.2635 and the big news of adjusting QE program saw that massive strengthening of the Canadian dollar Moving in that four hours, a good hundred and almost 180 pip downward move. A reduction of QE reduces the supply of money into the economy. And with that reduction of supply actually leads to a strengthening of the currency. That's why we saw that big move downwards. And as they reduce QE, the next progressive step will be to eventually increase interest rates. And at a rate increase, that would also in, um, strengthen the currency as well. So putting all that together, this seems to be the first step towards further strengthening of the US CAD. So what we're seeing here now is that big reversal move. We've seen that consolidation between 1.2635 and 1.25 for the last um, one, two, three, four weeks. For a month now, we've seen that consolidation. Now, it looks like it's trying to push lower. As we speak, it actually is trying to move lower. But what's coming up in terms of what could impact the US CAD further today or you know, even into next week, I'll tell you more about next week coming up, but later today on Friday, we do not have any Canadian news coming up. We do have Euro PMI numbers. We have Pound PMI numbers. We have some US PMI numbers coming out with possibly some US strength, slight US strength coming around, but no direct Canadian data being released. So how do you trade this? What would you expect on the charts? Looking at the US CAD here again on the H4 time frame, I would anticipate further move downwards. Further move, a rejection of that 1.25 resistance level for a further move downwards, possibly towards the 1.24 support level or even the 1.2380 support level. As a trading opportunity, as a trading idea, what you're looking for is this four hour candle to close at or below the 1.2475 level. And you can be looking at a good 60 to 70 pip profit towards the downside, a stop loss of about 30 pips towards the up above that resistance. So you're looking at below 1.2475, 30 pip stop loss, 60 pip take profit level, Following, continuing that move downwards, a risk reward of one to two is quite a safe trade towards the downside. If it does come back up towards 1.25 and break above that resistance level, then I would avoid jumping into any trades at that point because it would be going against the most recent policy release or policy decisions of strength of trying to strengthen the Canadian. So I think any upside move will probably be short, very short term um, and short lived before a resumption of a move further down. 
All right, thank you, Jin, for the analysis on Canadian dollar. Um, right now, we also have the cryptocurrency analysis done by Daniel. Daniel is, uh, is the trading coach at LCMS Traders. So uh, yeah, I'll pass the time to Daniel for the cryptocurrencies analysis. Daniel. Okay, thank you, Jinwei, very much. Uh, so, wow, the today cryptocurrency, just this morning, lots of movements uh, coming in, right? No surprise what has happened. Let me go to the chart right now. Okay, so you can see from here, this morning only it moved. I mean, this morning we were, I was just discussing and they say that look at Bitcoin, you know, if it, if it's going, it seems to be breaking down a below 50, if it breaks below 50, hey, this psychological resistance level probably going to be, uh, we need to hold it else it will break downwards. Now, moving forward, it, it it's looking to break. So we have to wait what has happening here. Before I come to that, you know, so what happened the previous day, this whole week, look at this big candle coming down, big movements all the way down from 60,000 all the way to 50,000 before it came back up, came back up, people were buying it. Uh, that was because there was speculation that the US Treasury may be looking down to crack down again, you know, on the money laundering activities within the cryptocurrencies. You know, of course, then uh, a lot of them are saying that no, 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 not really. It, 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 it could, it's most likely to do to the blackout in China's Xinjiang region, you know, called there, where that location has a lot of Bitcoin mining and thus causing a lot of big sell off. Now, whichever the reason is, it is, it did more or less recovered from that big uh, movements then, and we were actually looking at possible continuation of a trend upwards towards the 60,000 region. Now, but with that, you know, why I do say that because there will be driven, Bitcoin has been driven so much by the acceptance of, um, you know, a lot of retailers, Tesla, all those were willing to accept, uh, accept cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and other, uh, other cryptocurrencies asset. But however, today, just today alone, it just keep dropping and it has finally dropped below uh, 50,000 range again, level again. And what is the reason? Uh, Scott has mentioned already, right? There were a lot of rumors that the US President Joe Biden will be tightening the crypto car regulation in the US and also submit a proposal to the Congress to increase capital gain taxes. Now, what does mean increase capital tax means if you sell off, you know, those millionaires uh, of crypto millionaires who have been selling, who have buy and sell, uh, sell away their, their cryptos, earning a big profit. These are all capital gain. So they want to tax the capital gains and they're even thinking about taxing uh, around for to increase the tax to about 43.4% tax on those millionaire investors itself. So that's ca causing this, this rumor and this news coming out from Bloomberg cause, just cause it to all the cryptocurrency to just drop. People are just selling off because imagine if you were to uh, to just recover this sell off here and if you, let's say, you, you, you want to, if the capital tax comes true, you probably like Bitcoin. You probably need to go above the sixty thousand range. And in fact, the, right now, if you buy it right now, you need a capital gain tax at fifty thousand. You probably need to be above eighty five thousand just to recover the uh, tax. You have to pay for the tax itself. So a lot of people seems to be dropping off, selling off their cryptocurrencies just to uh, avoid this tax. Now we'll see how. So right now, coming back here, you can see right now it is at fifty thousand range. We probably got to see today. Friday, today is a Friday, uh, end of the day. See what's going to happen. If it does it close below the fifty thousand range. Now, if it does happen, what could possibly happen is it will probably the next week also a big sell, a continuation of a sell off all the way, even possible. We have to see first at the forty five thousand level. Okay, first stretch will be the forty five thousand. I mean, we'll move this to next week. Okay, and probably next week. If it's close below today, close below 50,000 range. Oh, sorry, that's next month. Yes, sorry. So this is next week here coming in. You know, I, I will probably, the first level we will see is the 45,000 range, a previous low here. Well, does it break below here? Let me, let me put this level here so I know where it is. Let's put it really nicely here. It probably go, go to the 45 level range. And if it indeed break below the 45,000 level, it could really push all the way to the next support level, to the really support level of 40,000 range. Now, we're going to see over the weekend, is there any more news regarding this uh, tax proposal where the Congress will be approving the, the, this, this week or the next week? We'll see all these news coming in for the Bitcoin. Okay. 
Now, Ethereum, Ethereum is going to follow the same uh, movement. However, you can see Ethereum is performing actually better than Bitcoin. It does follow the, the Bitcoin in terms of the trend. I mean, last week it did sell down, but it continues really nice, continues up the trend uh, coming up. And in fact, this is what I, I was mentioning about Ethereum, that it would probably be dropping down if there was a big drop. Unexpectedly, I didn't expect it to big drop because of the blackout or the uh, rumor on the user treasury crackdown. However, it did recover. The expectation of Ethereum doing well did is is did recover. It did move up quite close to where I was predicting the level of about 26,000, 27,000 range. However, with this new rumor coming in and a possible proposal of taxes on capital gains, it is at a probably big sell off. However, you know, we'll have to see where the Bitcoin coming in similar. See, does it breaks down? So I was looking at 23,000, it breaks at 23, and if it closed below the 21,000, uh, 2,150 here, bear in mind it could drop to the got lower to a 2,000 range, and then that's where we really need to see uh, how it moves. However, I have a bit, in my personal opinion, I am a bit uh, optimistic about optimism about the Ethereum. A lot of uh, investors seems to be uh, starting to shift from the Bitcoin to the Ethereum. Looking, looking at it, that they, they think that the capital gains and the, the gains or the percentage gains could be a much, much better on the Ethereum now compared to the Bitcoin. But it's, it's just a personal opinion right now. So if it doesn't break below the 2150, I, it possibly could move up because of this optimism uh, here. Okay, so I right now to all the way to next week, I believe it, Ethereum will still follow the Bitcoin uh, uh, movements, really corre quite correlated uh, together. So we have to watch out for it. If it does breaks down, I think right now for the rumor, you know, it, it probably try to hold at 2,150 and we'll see from Ethereum how it moves on from there. Okay, so hopefully if the optimistic nothing happens, no more news coming on the weekend, then possibly it will go possibly move, uh, it will bounce off on the 2,150 and continues up, it breaking to the 2,300, coming back to the 2,500 range level. Okay, so that's uh, what I have for the cryptocurrencies. Okay, Daniel, so uh, one of our web webinar attendees, Sunil, has a question. Um, will this tax, if passed, have a long-term effect on demand for crypto? Yes, I, I think I, I believe so because it, can you uh, there are a lot of uh, imagine those tax coming in, especially for the US side on those capital gains forty three percent. So imagine if you were to buy uh, a crypto, let's say even uh, let's say easier at, at uh, fifty thousand dollars just to cover the tax alone, you must go uh, almost uh, to uh, by like say ninety thousand range above 85 to 90,000 range just to do a quick calculate, estimate calculation. The price needs to go above that just to cover the capital gains, you know, just to, to cover and make some decent profits for yourself. So I think they will give a, a lot of uh, players or traders coming in whether or not uh, to look at to whether they want to buy cryptocurrencies or not. And may they shift it to the stocks, back to the stock market and options as well. Okay, hey, thank you so much, Daniel, for the analysis on cryptocurrency. So, uh, yeah, again, guys, um, the analysis and trade ideas shared here are just views and opinions of the speakers. So please remember to do your own analysis uh, prior to entering any trades. It is not a trade recommendation. Okay, so um, today is Friday. Uh, I will get Jin in a, in a bit to give us a bit of guidance towards next week's uh, market happenings. But before that, let's get Daniel again to share what the Traders Club is all about. Daniel. Okay, yes, I'm back. Thank you very much. So traders, you know, so LCMS traders have been started in 2014. Now we have helped hundreds of traders, you know, going through like what they know, not, don't know, understand what is happening, completely confused, unprofitable to actually understanding the market, recovering losses. Right? And finally, being profitable. Now, how do we go about now continuing the trend in this COVID time? We have we are like to introduce you to the LCMS Traders Club, which is our delicate, dedicated uh, club platform. Now, let me share the screen here right now with you. So this is this is our platform. It's really a, for anyone serious about being profitable in trading. Now, we host a community of traders here, sharing strategies, 
ideas, analysis, monitoring the market together. It is almost being a part of a professional team here right now. So you can see we have a chat group of trading floors. This one mentioned sharing strategies, ideas, analysis, and a market watch. We share, monitor the market, share it with the whole community. What could possibly be happening or what has happened in the market? Right. So just to know, just to let you know about some of the features available on this platform, you know, if on the widgets here, we have the, here the economic calendars. Okay, right now economic calendars where news calendar where you can plan your trades, know what surprises gonna come uh, will be could be coming out. Then you call it the data flash. That's one of the personal favorites here. The data flash is you get the news uh, earlier than anyone else, and it can actually prompt you when the actual news comes in, gives you uh, give you a promise so that you don't have to keep watching. It will automatically refresh and let you know. Now, we're, what we also have is the FX heat market. Oh, there you go. <laughs> See, uh, there it tells you what about what about, about the news and. and, and you can hear it yourself. Then you also the FX heat map where you can see what is moving currently right now, knowing immediately which currency pair to focus on. So you can see in the US, uh, yen, you know, it is moving upwards green right now. So really very nice. Immediately know which one to focus on. Now, not only that, everything here is moderated by the coaches and LCMS traders. And also we have live trading sessions twice a week. Now we have coaching sessions on Monday, a group coaching sessions on Monday, and a live trading sessions on Wednesday. Now these sessions where we can guide you through the current market conditions and we can literally make profits together. Now for those who are, I know here, those who have joined us from the Telegram channel, you have been receiving the trade signals late. But here in the platform, you will be getting all signals five minutes earlier and also learn the strategies and reasons behind the every signals and take profit level here. So you can see the signals will come out earlier than at those Telegram channels. And we also explain to you here on the signal analysis group on explaining why we take the trade and you can learn. Now, this platform is available uh, as a web-based, desktop and a mobile application which means you can access all contents anywhere, anytime, and receive mobile notifications on our signals. Now, this club access to the platform is worth thousands, but with a limited time, this is a chance to join it right now at $199 a year. I'm sure the link is pasted on the chat group here, but what you're going to do is only $199 a year, which literally less than a dollar a day. Now, this is without a doubt the very least you should do and make sure to achieve your best in trading. Now, this price can change anytime, so make sure you get aboard right now, okay? That's, that's what I have for the LCMS Traders Club. Okay, thank you, Daniel, for that. So right now, Jin, yeah, please give us a little bit of uh, some hints on trades for the next week's uh, market, Jin. Right, so um, as much as this week has been a lot about the UK, about the pound numbers being released, being surprised a little bit from the BOC with the policy adjustments next week seems to be a bit heavier in terms of the Aussie dollar and some of the US dollar news. So looking at again forextradingasia.com, the economic calendar there, next week Monday going to be a little bit quiet, not too much happening there, but on Tuesday we're going to have you know some news coming around starting up the week but the main bulk of news is going to start from wednesday onwards we're going to see the aussie cpi numbers we've seen cpi numbers come out for the us for the uk for canada now the australian cpi numbers looking like it's going to be quite good so i'll tell you more about that on monday but you know with a stronger cpi number we might see some move come around there and then we have some Canadian retail sales number being released doesn't look too flash, but we already see that being applied from the CPI numbers already. So this is in alignment with expectations. But the main show, the main show next week will be the Fed interest rate decision on Thursday morning, 2 a.m. GMT plus 8 Singapore time. So you will know that on Thursday morning, I will be lacking sleep because I'll be watching that event. Uh, 
do not expect any interest rate decision changes or do not expect any changes in interest rates, but paying attention to the statements and also the conference coming up, if they're going to adjust policy. We've already seen that one adjustment of policy from the Bank of Canada. Is the US going to follow suit or are they going to even just signal a possible adjustment or that could lead to further US dollar weakness or maybe some strength coming around. Following Thursday's Fed decision, we do have a lot of New Zealand news and Aussie news coming out, but those are big long-term numbers. So I don't think it's going to impact much of the retail traders that it will want to look at that news. Um, Euro employment numbers, not going to do too much. And then it comes back down to the US GDP numbers. Look at that quarter on quarter was 4.3%. Expected US GDP to go to 57 So a good recovery quarter on quarter. If that does come around, what's going to happen to the US dollar? As we go through next week, we have that update coming up. With Friday being end of the week next week and also end of the month, probably expect some extra volatility as um, people start balancing off their books. And we also have good amount of news, Eurozone GDP numbers being released all the way, a lot of new CPI numbers coming out, um, US employment numbers, some employment data, Canadian GDP coming out as well, going from 0.7 to 0.5%. This is probably going to be quite similar with the adjustments of policy. It might take a little bit of time for that to come into play. So, you know, the Canadian dollar is going to be quite interesting at the end of the week, next week, and consumer sentiment coming around for the US. So all in all, we're going to see quite a lot of news next week for the Aussie dollar, for the US, quite a lot of US numbers being released, Canadian as well. But the main show will be the Fed Reserve with their interest rate decision statements and possibly the press conference as well. Hey, thank you, Jin. All right, we have come to the end of the webinar. So um, our podcast is up and running in Spotify. Do search for Forex Trading Asia in Spotify. So if you can't tune in to the webinar, uh, follow the Spotify channel and get your daily updates too. And we have the links to the Telegram channel is up, the free signals, the LCMS Traders YouTube channel for the daily recordings. And if you want the faster signals, you want to learn the strategy behind the signals, uh, the Traders Club link is up too. And if you're looking for a managed account service that you don't have to trade yourself, have some have a professional trading team to trade for you, check out forexbriefcase.com. So yeah, that's the end of the session today. We'll see you guys on Monday for the Aussie and Kiwi analysis. Thank you and goodbye.